Hi again, this is David with Clarksville Guns and Archery coming at you again with another video that hopefully some of you might find entertaining and or interesting. Today we talked about um, things we're going to go over about being more of a survival mindset, um, not so much an end of the world apocalypse thing because I feel like that's been blown out of proportion. But let's say a natural disaster does happen and you need something ideal or useful for different situations. And we're just gonna go over some of the more popular options, some things that we saw in the store that we carry from time to time, and some things that some of you might even look at and go, hey, I've got one of those, I could make use of that. Um, so that's the purpose of the video for today. So to kick it off, we're gonna start out kind of in order of things of maybe less importance or just something that you might pick up and go, hey, no, no one's really gonna think about this. Hey, I haven't really thought about this before. So to kick it off, let's talk about 22s first. 22 is a very popular cartridge, 22 long rifle especially. And while it's not ideal necessarily for self-defense or for big game hunting, it is great for small game hunting. Things like squirrel, rabbit, etc. cetera. Um, one of the things we, we sell a lot of here is a Henry survival rifle. And I'll kind of pick one up and kind of show you what it looks like. First, I'm gonna keep my finger out of the trigger hole to get the trigger magazine out. And so everyone understands, we are unloaded. Now, the reason we picked this one is this is a very, very, very lightweight firearm. Um, and while I can't take the thing apart to show you the cool aspect of it, because you know everything on here comes apart, loads into the stock of the firearm, and you have a nice little compartment for every little piece right there, if we can zoom in. So I can see you've got your receiver, your magazines, and your barrel. And this also floats, which it might seem kind of gimmicky, but I mean, let's face it, some of us live near bodies of water. If I'm on a boat camping or my stuff gets knocked into the water, this is gonna float and that's a good thing. While it's not perhaps the best 22 out there, I do think it's the most ideal for camping or for being on the move. Um, one of the coolest things about it as well is the bolt itself does push in. So I would be able to cock it as such. And then if I was going to store it, I could just lock that piece in. And of course you got your hammer right there. Um, so it's a very good basic little 22, something to look at. You might wanna consider if you're going to be in your survival mode or apocalypse mode, if you will. I'll go ahead and put the magazine back in and I'll pull out the next one. Mm -hmm. Next, let's talk about shotguns. That's probably the next kind of useful item that you see most people have. When the term shotgun comes up, a lot of people envision someone with the pump action or even a single shot. And those are great shotguns, no doubt, and there's nothing wrong with those. I myself and a few other people tend to prefer more of a semi-automatic shotgun. And I'll go ahead and pull one of these out for you. As you can see, it's loaded. So all the, all the safety people on YouTube, you know, don't get mad. So, I just picked one out of the stack back here. Um, this happens to be a Beretta A300, and while it is maybe a little on the Gucci side for a survival gun, um, it's a very good example of what a good semi-automatic shotgun can do. Um, it's very reliable, it's got a very good name behind it, so you know it's gonna work. Um, it, you, when we talk about semi versus pump, a lot of people think that semi-autos are not reliable, and that's just not true. You just have to use the correct kind of ammo. Um, you wanna stick with high brass, things of that nature, and you're gonna get consistent working of your bolt. Also, missing a shot's a thing, and follow-up shots are a thing. And if I'm in a situation where I have to make that shot count, and holy crap, if I miss, how do I, you better hope you can rack that, that uh, slide back. Um, semi-auto kind of takes that away from it, so I can get that second follow-up shot if I need to. And the beautiful thing about shotguns is I can carry buckshot, birdshot, or even slugs. So that's three options right there I can take game with. And in a pinch, if you're just not into handguns at all, or if you're out by your shotgun and some rapscallion comes and you have to defend yourself, well, a shotgun's a great option for that as well. So, semi-auto shotguns are definitely on my list and I, they tend to be on a lot of people's list more and more. So, I'll go ahead and close this bad boy up. And let's go to the next one down the line. The next one might seem a little weird or different and I'll, I'll go into why I picked it. Everybody should know what this is, if you don't, You've probably been living under a rock. This is an AK platform pistol. Um, the reason to say AK platform is for those that don't know, there is a difference between an AK-47, an AKM, and even an AK-74. And if you really want to get an AKs, there's like a 101 and an AK-12, and I won't go into that in this video. 
So we'll just say an AK platform. Why would I say that? Well, for once, the mags are really hard to kill. Um, you get a good steel mag, this is not going to fail you. I've seen these things rust and just be absolute garbage and they still run and run and run. That's what you want. When it comes to reliability, everyone out there has heard the stories of the AK and how like deadbolt reliable they are. Um, some other channels might show some issues that they come up with and that's fine. For the most part, most of us aren't gonna be in those issues and it's pretty much gonna run. Um, the reason I picked this out, and it might seem a little strange to some of you, is the 760 by 39 round is essentially a 30-30 cartridge. Um, it's not the exact same, but it's very similar what it does ballistically, especially when it hits meat. That means I can hunt with this. It also means if I have to, I can defend myself with it. If you're someone that thinks that I don't need 30 rounds and that's wrong, well, guess what? They make 10-round magazines for it, too. So a very robust, very reliable rifle that's used for survival as well as self-defense. Some kind of AK platform. Let's go to the next one. So you're probably wondering what I'm going to pull out next. I'm sure you've guessed it. If you haven't by now, then you don't, you don't know me very well and you probably don't know us at the store, but that's fine. Everybody knows what this is. Why would I pick an AR-15? What could possibly do when it comes to survival? I can hunt deer with this. I know a lot of people out there can freak out when you say, no, you can't hit anything with a 223, it won't take it down. Yes, it will. A 223 can take down a white-tailed deer very easily. And yes, it can be used in self-defense. The other beautiful thing about this weapon is you can find pieces for this in just about any gun store in the United States. Um, that makes it extremely ideal if you're going to be in a survival mode. Something happens, I can't just go to Walmart anymore. I can't go down to my grocer. I can't go down to Clarksville Guns and Archery and pick up parts. Well, just about everyone and their brother has one of these. So, hey, I need to borrow a bulk carrier group. Hey, I need to borrow this piece. Someone probably has it, or they have another one laying around. Um, that makes this extremely ubiquitous. And something that I would say, if you don't have one and you're into guns, you really should think about getting one. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something like this. I mean, this particular one is very basic. Um, not, the big rage now is for free-floated free handrails and they want all the Gucci stuff and there's nothing wrong with that. There's also nothing wrong with this either. For those of you that maybe aren't in the tactile crowd too much, I can silt mount optics, I can silt mount lights and lasers if I want, I can change the handguards out easily. Um, there's a reason they call it a Barbie doll for men. So I would definitely look at getting one of these if you don't have one. If you do, you've got a very good survival tool already in your, in your, uh, so, last thing but not least. Last but not least, we're gonna go over something a little more, perhaps less survivally. Some people may not think of this as something really important. And I, I might go over why that's important here in a moment, but let me go ahead and get these out. Handguns, specifically a Glock 17 and or a Glock 19. Now, before I get into this, these aren't the best guns ever. What they are is they're the most ideal pistols out there you can get. Just like with the AR-15, everyone and their brother probably has one or both of these. You're going to find these just about everywhere. You can find parts and pieces for them everywhere. That matters a lot in a survival situation. You know, Granddaddy's 1911, I'm sure is a great shooting gun, and yes, 1911s are awesome, they're very finicky, as can be just about any other metal frame gun. That doesn't make them bad guns. It just means in a situation where I can't go get it fixed or I can't find parts easily, I want something that's gonna work in adverse conditions. Um, and just about any other polymer striker fire gun you can add to this. It doesn't have to be a Glock series pistol. Just understand if you went with something that wasn't a Glock, you might have a harder time finding parts for it. Um, your mileage is going to vary, of course. Now, you, you might be wondering why I put a 17 and a 19 down. And that's because everyone's hand size is different. Me personally, I like shooting a 17 more. It's more comfortable in my hand. It's a little bit larger than a 19, not by much, but usually just enough that it matters. However, I don't hide it as well. And most people typically don't, which is where the 19 kind of comes into play. And for the longest time, for those of you that have been doing this for some time, especially in say the last 10 to 15 years, you've always heard the Glock 19 is the quote, 
only nine millimeter pistol you need. I won't go out and quote other YouTubers, you know who they are, you know who I'm talking about. What it means is you want something that's extremely reliable, it's going to work when you need it to. Also, you need something that I can find parts for easily, that's not really going to stop working on you in the worst possible situation. And I might be, able, might be wanting to hide it. The 19 might be a little more your style. Which, whichever way you go choose, whichever one you're wanting to pick, whichever pistol you choose to pick, just make sure it's working and it's reliable and you can find parts for it. Now, I've done all the popular ones. I've done everything that is probably useful. Um, I'm sure we could add more to this list. I could probably find bolt action rifles and rifles in different caliber and pistols in different caliber, and that's great. I like doing something a little bit more fun, though. So we were going to call this a top five, but I like going one, one step extra, so we're not going to call it a top five video. For those that don't know what this is, this is a Smith & Wesson Governor. And if you don't know why I picked this, that's actually a good thing, because now I can talk about it a little bit. And if you're still watching this video, you like hearing me talk, so that's, that's a wonderful thing, too. A lot of people probably know about what the Taurus Judge is. And what that is, is it's a revolver like this that can fire a 45 Long Colt or 410 shotgun shell. Smith & Wesson took that one step above. They said, well, that's cool. We're going to make one that does both of those things and fires 45 ACP. So now I'm getting three calibers in one. On top of that, I'm getting six cylinders. The Judge only has five. Um, Another step on this is while these are a little more cost prohibitive than something like a Judge, they're a little bit better built, and I would probably spend the money on one of these if I was going to buy one just because I think they are a little bit better of a gun. Again, your mileage is going to vary. There's probably someone in the comments right now that's going to say, my Judge has never failed. That's cool. I'm glad yours hasn't. Wonderful. I still think this is a better built gun. Plus, I'm getting an extra round out of it. Um, it seems kind of gimmicky, and it took me a while to kind of get over that gimmick gimmickous as well. Um, what I will say is there's something about being able to find three different types of ammunition for one pistol. So maybe it's a good good uh, survival gun. You know, maybe it's something to think about. So these are just some ideas, guys. Uh, there's nothing really in, um, that I would add to this or take away from it. Um, everything, at least from my perspective, is what I would consider, hey, if I can only have one or one example, I'd grab one of these off the shelf and be happy with it. Again, your mileage is going to vary. Some of you might post the comments how I'm incorrect and I don't know what I'm talking about and you've been doing this for 50 years and you're going to list all these older, older Millsurp guns and if it works for you guys, it works for you. Just something to think about when you go out to get your more prepper-minded self or if you're looking more of a natural disaster or something bad happens. So let us know what you think in the comments, guys.